spiritually blind. You are blinded to the big picture. You are blinded to the grand plan. Your life becomes obsessed with the here and the now. All you can see is a checking account and a savings account and a retirement fund and a good job and good friends and a great weekend and awesome vacations. And all you can see is here and now. And you have no ability to step back for a second and realize there is something far more extensive and expansive and imperative and important transpiring and it is time and space beyond called eternity and there is a creator and there is a God and there is something way more important than your new boat that you're going to take on the water this summer. But your understanding is darkened and all you see is how many Instagram followers you have. You're, you're, You're so limited in scope. You're alienated from the life of God. Listen to the language Paul uses. You are alienated. You are completely removed from, listen, the life of God. Spiritually, you are lifeless. There is ignorance that is profound and present because your heart is hard. Wow. Jesus saves. From what? Uh, That. Your heart is hard. You you know the word heart means the control center of your being, your conscience, your feelings, your emotions, your will. It is hard, desensitized, indifferent, and careless to the one who designed you, wired you, created you, put you together. You are impervious to any of his involvement. Now you might be here and say, I'm not, I don't really care if my heart is hard. Let me just appeal to you on this. Your experience on this planet is profoundly limited by a control center that is desensitized to the one who gave it to you in the first place. If you are looking for maximum human experience on earth, it is intrinsically linked to your ability to connect your existence and your experience to the one who gave it to you in the first place. So nobody wants a hard heart. How do you know? How subjective is a hard heart metaphor or statement or phrase? You, you have a hard heart. I'll never forget growing up in church. I've been in more church services and you've had lattes at Starbucks, okay? You have lost count, right? And I, I remember years ago being in the church and running around and maybe creating a little bit of ruckus and stuff. Practically lived at the church and sweet old saint minus the sweet who told me, you, young man, have a hard heart. Well, that was really uplifting. Thank you. (laughs) You have a hard heart. How do you know if you have a hard heart? Because based on the language of Paul, it's, it's really a bad thing when your control center is completely desensitized to God. Imagine this rope, okay, pretend this rope just goes on forever, okay? Just imagination. Pretend it goes around the world a few times. It doesn't. It ends at the rock. But uh, let's just imagine this thing goes on forever. Now, imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. You just exist forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on earth. You've got a few short years here on earth, and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. This is, this is your existence. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about. You're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to save, save, save so I can really enjoy this part right here. (laughs) And you're consumed with that. And you're thinking, oh man, am I going to get to travel? Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What 
about this? What about this? What about th- what about all this stuff? It's just it's crazy to me because because the Bible teaches that what I do during this little red part determines how I'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever. And and so why would I spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible, enjoying myself as much as I can? Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. See, I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy, and I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God because when I face him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth, and it can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this, and then comes eternity. And I'm not going to be fooled. I'm not going to spend my life down here. See, people look at some of my decisions and go, oh, you're so stupid because that's going to really affect this. I go, no, you're stupid because it's going to affect all of this. (laughs) Man, I'm serious. I I look. I look at the way people live and I go, wow, that is so crazy. You are so crazy. You're going to do that right now, just to enjoy right now, not even knowing if you have tomorrow and you think that's smart and that I'm dumb, it doesn't make any sense. Paul goes, I'm not going to look around at all this stuff. And it's tempting. It's tempting to all of us. That's what I'm saying. Down here, it's crazy because everyone lives that way. Everyone lives for the red part. No one's thinking about the millions of years afterwards. It's, it's just this crazy deception that we can't get out of our minds. And Paul goes, I'm not doing that. He goes, I keep my eyes on that. I keep my eyes on that finish line, and I'm going to forget what's behind me. I'm not looking around. I'm just going to, I'm straining. He goes, I'm straining forward. I'm like stretching forward for that mark. I'm going to pass this thing. I'm going to live this out, and I'm going to face him. I'm going to come before the judges, and he's going to hand me that trophy. He goes, I'm going to get it, and I haven't gotten there yet. He goes, but you better believe I'm using every muscle, exerting every bit about me, because I'm going to pass that line well. Well, 